Four there? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have our exam next Tuesday. And the uh, material that it's going to be over is, is somewhat limited, as you can see. There's not a, there's, I think there's three sections. There's only three sections on this test. So I have a review here for you. And what I did is I just went and kind of looked at the homework problems for each of the sections and picked a couple that were similar. So what I thought I would do is um, maybe work through, like I'll do number one and let you do number two on your own because it's pretty much like number one. And then maybe like I'll do number three and you do number four. I'll do number five or six or seven. So what I want to do is like one problem of each type. And after I've done all of that, then I'm going to let you work the rest yourself, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So let's see, um, number one, you're just asked to find the derivative, right? And we're given f of x equals negative 7e to the x plus 4x squared minus 5. So the main thing, I guess, to remember here is that from this section there were two derivatives that you needed to know. Uh, the derivative of e to the x was itself, and the derivative of the natural log of x was 1 over x. So hopefully that looks familiar to you. That's what we, that's what we did in this section. So we're going to go through this. We're going to take the derivative. Uh, there are three terms. So what's the derivative of that first term right here? What's the derivative of this? What do you do with that negative 7? Just bring it along, right? Because it's attached to the e to the x. So negative 7 comes along, then the derivative of e to the x is itself. So e to the x. And then the rest of it, let's see, plus uh, the derivative of 4x squared. That's something that we did way a long time ago. So that's just what? 8x. And then finally, derivative of, neg of 5x, which would be just 5. That's it. OK? That's it. So I think number one is pretty straightforward. Not, not a whole lot there. Uh, number two, why don't you just do number two right now? I think you can do number two in less than a minute. Yes? Uh, with the negative 7 and the e to the power of 2, uh -huh. do we always have to show that multiplication? No, you don't. Okay. Nope. You do not have to show that. All right, so what do we have? 3 over x. OK, so you can, you can write that two different ways. You can write that 3 times 1 over x. That would be correct. Or you could write that as 3 over x. Those are the same thing. Okay, so that's the derivative of this. 
and then minus 6x. That's it. Okay. You probably just want me to give you like 10 of those problems, right? And that'll be it. That's a test. All right. So let's see. What's the diff difference between numbers uh, 1, 2, and 3? So for number three, it says, find the equation of the tangent line to this curve. All right, so that goes back to this idea that if we have a curve, we can find the slope of the tangent line. But more than that, we can find the actual equation of that line. And that, that required that we went back to this formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Remember this thing? Remember that? We had to use this. The m was the slope of the tangent line, and then the x1 and the y1 was, was actually this point on the line, or on the, on the graph. So notice in number three, they say find the equation of the tangent line to the curve f of x equals two natural log x at x equals one. That means I'm telling you that the x coordinate here is one, right? So we know that the x1 is one. What don't we know? We don't know what the y is. But we actually do know what the y is, because what's the function? The function given to us is f of x equals 2 natural log x, right? And so what we need to do to figure out what the y coordinate is here is we need to plug 1 into this. So we have not taken a derivative yet. I'm just figuring out what the y coordinate is of the point on the graph. So what is f of 1? So 2 times natural log of 1. I hear some calculators coming out. That's good. Natural log of 1 is 0. So you're going to wind up getting 0 here. So that means this right here <coughs> is the point that's on our graph, right? This corresponds to the x1, y1 that we're going to need in this formula. We clear? The only thing we need now is, is the actual slope of the tangent line. And that's where the derivative comes in. So what is the derivative of this function? So the derivative of that function is 2 over x, right? Because again, derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, so 2 over x. and then. I'm actually interested in knowing what's happening at, at this point when, when x is 1. So I need to plug 1 into this. And that just gives me 2 over 1, which is 2. So this is going to be our m. Our slope is going to be 2. And now I have all the pieces I need to come up with the equation of the line. OK, so here we go. I'm going to write down the equation. It's y minus. What was y1? y1 was 0 equals m, which is 2, slope of our tangent line, then x minus x1, which was the x-coordinate up here, which was 1. And then you don't have to write y minus 0. You can just write y equals, and then you can distribute the 2 through 2x two minus 2. So that is the equation of that line. Questions? <coughs> now I think I should work through number four because number four is a little bit different than this one. It doesn't work out. The numbers aren't as pretty. So the equation is going to look weird. All right. So I think I want to work through number four. So for number four, we have f of x equals 2 plus e to the x. And we're looking again at x equals 1. So when I say x equals 1, you again have to realize that I've given you the x coordinate, but I haven't given you the y coordinate. right? And you're going to need that y coordinate. So how do we get that y coordinate? How do we get this piece right here? plug 1 into that function, right? And this is where things get weird. Look, f of 1 is 2 plus e to the first power, isn't it? 
right? What is that? Yeah, four point something. So you actually, you're actually going to need to use your calculator and figure out what e to the first power is. And I've told you to bring your calculators to be sure you know how to use them. Do you have a calculator now? Batteries? Yes, you're going to be good? Yes? Okay. So don't come in here on Tuesday, first time you've ever tried to do e to a power, right? Practice this at home. So what are you getting? Two point, uh, four point seven one eight or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So this is approximately. Let's go four point seven two. Is that all right? We'll just round it to two decimal places. So that means the point on our graph is the point one four point seven two. Okay. So we'll need that point in a minute, right? Now let's find the derivative. What is the derivative of this function? Well, derivative of 2 is 0. Derivative of e to the x is itself. So the derivative is just e to the x, right? Now keep in mind, what we're trying to do is this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we've got the point. We've got x1 and y1. We've already got that. We need the slope. So we need the derivative. And now, what do we plug into the derivative? What do we plug in? The 1, right? This is x. So we're plugging 1 in to this to figure out what the derivative is. So f prime of 1 is e to the first power, which is approximately 2.72. So this is your last opportunity for questions today. So anything on this? Yes? Like this? Yes. You can put equals. I'm not going to care. Yeah. I'm just doing it to be technically correct up here. Yeah. OK, so let's, let's write the equation. It's going to be y minus what? y minus 4.72, good, equals m, which is this piece, right? This is m. So 2.72 times x minus one. one. Okay, we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna, we're gonna solve this for y. So I need to distribute this through the parentheses. y minus 4.72 equals 2.72x minus 2.72. And there's one last step. Yep, bring this over to the other side, so add it to both sides. Add 4.72, add 4.72. Goes away over here, you get y equals 2.72x, and then what? Plus 2. That's it. Questions? We're good? So, so far, things seem pretty smooth with this. All right, that's it for the section on derivatives of exponentials and logs. Okay, so now we move on to the next section. So, if you want to on your review here, you can put numbers one through four. We're, I don't have the sections with me, but that was derivatives of exponentials and logs. Um, the number Five, six, and seven are all implicit differentiation. Pardon? Uh, five through seven, yes. So let's look at number five. So it says find y prime at the point one, four. And you're given that 5x cubed 
minus y minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so do you all remember how we do the implicit differentiation? We, we take the derivative of both sides of the equation. And when, when I say y prime, this really means take the derivative with respect to x. That's, that's implied. That's, what's, that's what we mean by it, all right? So you're really going to be taking this equation and taking the derivative with respect to x on both sides of the equation. Okay, on both sides of the equation you're taking derivative with respect to x. So maybe we start with the right side because it's easy, right? What's the derivative of zero? Well, derivative of any constant is zero, so this is just zero on the right side. On the left side, what is the derivative of 5x cubed with respect to x? 15x squared, and that's it, right? It's just 15x squared. You're just bringing down the power. Then you're going to have minus, now, what is the derivative of y with respect to x? dy dx, right? dy dx, or I also wrote that as just y prime. Okay, so there were two ways I, I showed you that. I did that, and then I also said you could write dy dx. Okay, either one of these is, is okay. Is that all right? And then we still need to take derivative of negative 1, which is 0. So I don't need it there, right? So what is, this, what is this saying? I'm supposed to find the derivative of y at 1, 4. What does that mean? It means I'm supposed to replace x with 1 and y with 4 in my answer. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So let's look at this equation. I'm trying to solve for y prime. So I'm trying to get this by itself. If you're looking at this one instead, you're trying to get this by itself, right? So why don't I just move some things around first? Why don't I move this to the other side and make it 15x squared equals y prime? Is that true? If you did it over here, it would be 15x squared equals dy dx. So this is what we're trying to solve for. And in order to solve for it, I now need to replace all the x's I see with 1 and all the y's that I see with 4. But there are no y's here, right? It's, it's y prime, but there's no, there are no y's here, just x's. So I'm just going to replace the x with 1. So 1 squared is 1, and times 15 is 15. So your derivative, y prime, is what? 15. That's it. Same thing over here, 15. So I'm not, I don't really care which way you do this on the test. You can do it this way or that way. It's, it's your call. You can get the same result. OK? How about we do number seven? And I'm just dragging today. What it is. Thought I slept good. Coffee's not helping. I had I had a lot of water this morning. Maybe I need something else. Maybe it's just your Friday. Feels like Friday. It feels like well, Friday I'd be all excited. I'm just tired. I don't know. Okay. So, oh, this is the equation. Where's the, what's the point that I give you here? Negative 1, 3? So negative 1, 3. We want y prime at negative 1, 3. Why don't you try that derivative real quick? Why don't you see if you can do that derivative? You're going to do the same thing you did on the last one. And let's see, let's see how many people get it right. Pardon? Do I know it? 
I don't yet. I haven't worked it. So just do the derivative, okay? Don't plug numbers in yet. I just want you to, to do the derivative and see if you get that derivative right. I'm going to go get some water from the water fountain. the derivative up here and see if you did this or not. Okay, quick show of hands, and just be honest, how many of you had that derivative? Okay. What the heck happened here? Product rule. Okay, so you may have forgotten this. Looks like a majority of you did, it's okay. That's why we're doing this. This is a product between two things, right? There's a product between 2x cubed and y. So when you take the derivative of a product, you must apply the product rule. Remember the product rule said that if you have f times g and you take the derivative, it's f prime times g plus g prime times f. That was a formula we did a long time ago. That's what we have here. So when I do the derivative, I say, what's the derivative of this first one? So what's the derivative of 2x cubed? 6x squared, right? So it's the derivative of this one times this one. So there's times y. Plus, now, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? y prime, or you could write dy dx there. Okay, That times this. And then we're done with the product rule. So do you all see these, these first group of things here is the product rule? OK, now I move on. Minus, now x cubed by itself, the derivative of that is, where is it? 3x squared, right? And then the derivative of 5 is 0, so it's gone. And then equals the derivative of 0, which is 0. So does this make sense? You sure? OK. Now, we're not done. We're now supposed to solve for y prime, right? So when I solve for y prime, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to just leave the y prime right there. I know I could try and get it by itself. But let me just replace all my x's with negative 1 and all my y's with 3, because that's what this says to do, right? OK, so let's go and replace all x's with negative 1. So this will be 6 times negative 1 squared times y, y is 3, plus y prime times 2 times negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 squared equals 0. Now, I know that looks ugly, but let's just, let's just do all of your order of operations and everything correctly. So what goes first here? What do we always do first? We do it in parentheses, right? But negative 1 can't do anything to negative 1, right? So I'm going to do the exponents. What's negative 1 squared? Positive 1, right? What's negative 1 cubed? Negative 1. Negative 1 squared? Positive 1. So this is really what this turns out to be. 6 times 1 times 3 plus y prime times 2 times negative 1 
minus 3 times 1 equals 0. So that just takes care of all my exponents. Now let's do multiplication. 6 times 1 times 3, 18. Plus, well actually, let's not make that plus. Let's, let's make that a minus. Because this is going to be negative 2, isn't it? That's negative 2 times y prime. So I'm going to write it as negative 2 y prime. So I switched the order. I put the 2 in front of the y prime. And then what's my last term there? This right here, minus 3, equals 0. Remember, I'm trying to get y prime by itself. So this becomes, how about I write uh, 15 minus 2y prime equals 0? So I just did 18 minus 3, didn't I, on the left side? 18 minus 3 is 15. Now I'm going to move. Wait, wouldn't it be a positive 3? So the x is a negative 1? Where? Where, where? This was squared. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't forget, this was squared, right? So we squared negative 1 okay, okay. and got positive 1. And then we multiplied it by negative 3. Yeah, don't multiply these two together first. I don't know if that's what you did, but don't multiply these first. I didn't put this you didn't square it, OK. Y'all still good? What's my last step here? Divide by 2. Divide by two. So 15 halves is y prime. Why don't you try number six right now? And just be very careful. Yes, you do. Yep, between the x and y only, right? Okay, good.
Did y'all get it? Something? A lot of you getting there? I wanted to show you real quick, um, I'm going to work that problem out, but on the previous problem, our answer was 15 halves, right? On the previous problem. I wanted to just show you this because the last time I, in class when we were going over this, I couldn't get the projector to work. So this, if I graph this equation, this is the, this is the graph of that equation, what you see here in red. In other words, if you pick, if you pick any point on this red curve and plug in the x and y coordinates into this, it should be true. You should get a true equation. Um, for example, if I take the point negative 1, 3, that's this point right here. If I, if I replace x with negative 1 and y with 3 here, I will get this will be true. The left side will be 0, the right side will be 0, it will be true. So that point lives on the graph. All of these red points live on, this, live on this curve, satisfy this equation. What we found, this 15 halves, what, what that actually represented was if we went to that point and we looked at the slope of the tangent line at that point, the slope of that line is 15 over 2, which is 7.5, which is a very steep tangent line. That's, what, that's visually, graphically, that's what we just did, all right? Now, let's, let's do the problem that you just worked out. Did you all take it all the way and try and get to y prime? Yeah? Or did you just do the derivative? How many of you tried to go all the way with it? Yeah? Are you all there? You all okay? Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's graph it anyway. It was 2y plus x times y minus 1 equals 0. So there's a graph, and we're supposed to be looking at negative 1, 1. So it's at this point right here. We're trying to find the slope of the tangent line there, right? That's what we're trying to do. So let's go through, let's go through the work and see if you did it correctly. We have 2x, 2y plus xy minus 1 equals 0. So when you take your derivative, you have three separate terms. You can do them individually. But the middle term is product rule. So what's the derivative of 2y? 2y prime, right? The 2 comes along for the ride. The derivative of y is y prime. Then you have plus. And now you have to do the product rule. So you do derivative of this times this plus derivative of this times this. So what is the derivative of this? 1 times y, so I'm just going to put y, plus now the derivative of y, which is y prime times x. And then we're done with product rule, right? That was it. That was product rule. Then keep going here. So derivative of negative 1 or derivative of 1? 0, and then equals derivative of 0, which is 0. So that's, that's your equation right there. Is it OK if I leave the x in front of the y? Oh, if you put this x in front of this y, that's fine. Because multiplication is commu what we call commutative, right? 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. So you're always allowed to flip the order of multiplication. OK, at this point, other questions? Go ahead. Sure. No, it's because you had a one. Oh, do you put the one right here? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You can have one times y. It's just going to be y, though, right? Okay, I'm going to just plug in um, the point. Remember, the point here was the point negative one, one, right? So I'm going to place all my x's with negative one, all my y's with one. What? All my y's with one. There we go. Okay, so am I going to replace y prime here? Do I replace that? No, that's what I'm trying to solve for. So I'm going to have 2y prime plus, this is y. What's y? 1. And then plus y prime times x. What was x? Negative 1. So y prime times negative 1 equals 0. I know that that looks weird, but... Uh, let me rewrite this. This is 2y prime 
plus 1 minus y prime equals 0. So what I'm doing is I'm saying that when you multiply y prime times negative 1, it just makes it negative y prime. Right? If I said what's x times negative 1, you'd say negative x. So same thing here. Now there is something we can do still. You see that we can combine these two together? Two y primes take away a y prime. How many y primes would you have? Just one. So we have y prime plus one. So we still have plus one there equals zero. We're almost there. Take the one to the other side. So y prime is negative one. We're done. Does it seem to match our picture up here? Does that information match what we have? Yeah, because if you look at the slope of this tangent line, it's negative, so that makes us feel good. And it looks like negative one, right? Like down one over one, down one over one. That's what it looks like. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> so if, if those gave you any trouble, just make sure you go back and review the homework for this section. Make sure you can do those problems. And then now we move on to the word problems. So number eight, we did number eight in, your, in class last time, right? Well, a pro problem like number eight in class last time. And we also did a problem like number nine in class last time. We did not, however, do a problem like number 10. So I'm actually not going to do number 8 or number 9 right now. I'm going to do number 10. So let's read number 10. If the price P in dollars and demand X for a product are related by this equation, would you mind turning off the projector, sir? Thank you. So they give you this equation. And they say this equation is an equation that gives you a relationship between the price of a product that you're selling in the demand for that product. All right, and it, it's, it says now at the end here, if the price is increasing at a rate of $2 a week, when the price is $30, find the rate of change in demand. So tell me what we're trying to find in this problem. I mean, what is the question at the very end saying? Find the what? Rate, rate. Rate of change, so the derivative of, change of, demand. of demand, right? They want the derivative, the change in demand. So how, how should I write that down? I, I want the change in demand. What, what's demand? X. X is demand in the problem. P is price, right? So I want dx, d, oh, what are we going to differentiate with respect to here? Hmm. Why time? Because in, in, the, in the first part of the wording of, of the problem, it says, if the price is increasing at a rate, you see that? The price is increasing. So if I have price, derivative of price, right, is increasing at a rate of $2 a week per week means that I'm differentiating with respect to time, that that would be where that two is. Does that make sense? They give us, if the price is increasing at a rate of $2 per week, derivative of price with respect to time is two. I want to know the rate at which the demand is changing with respect to, well, it has to be with respect to the same variable, time. Okay, so this is what I want. Now, when is it exactly that we're talking about? This 30 has to come into play here somewhere. Is it P is 30 or X is 30? 
if the price is increasing at a rate of $2 per week when the price is $30? Price. So when P, I'm going to put at P equals 30. There's a problem like this in your homework, okay? It's almost the same exact setup. It's just a different equation, all right? So again, I would practice this one in your homework after we do this. Um, any questions on what I wrote down over there, why I wrote that, or why I used D this or D that? Everyone's good? Now what? You take the derivative of all this, right? With respect to T, okay? So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t on the left side. And I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t on the right side. And I'll start with the right side, because what's the derivative of any constant with respect to any variable? It's always 0. Okay, So the right side is 0. Now remember, when I take my derivative on the left, I'm hoping to see a dx dt come out somewhere, right? And I should also see a dp dt come out somewhere over there. So let's see what happens. I have three terms, one, two, three, right? I'm going to do them separately. What is the derivative of x squared with respect to t? First, it's just 2x, so the 2 comes out, right? So you have 2 times the x, but here's where things change. Now you have to take derivative of what was here. What is the derivative of x with respect to t? Dx. dx dt. So tacked onto this with multiplication is dx dt. Is that okay? All right, moving on to the next piece. I need to take the derivative of 2x times p, which means I need to do the product rule. And this one's going to be a little tricky. But here's my product right there. I have multiplication. So remember the product rule says derivative of this times this plus derivative of this times this, right? That's the basic layout of it. What is the derivative of 2x with respect to t? So bring the 2 along for the ride, right? 2 is going to come along for the ride. And then ask yourself, what's the derivative of x with respect to t? Yes. dx dt. All right, so all this is right here is the derivative of 2x, isn't it? Product rule says derivative of this times this, right? So I still need to put next to that times p. I might run out of room here. Maybe I should have moved this down a little bit further. All right, am I done with the product rule? No, I've only done half of it, right? Now I need to say plus derivative of this times this. So what is the derivative of p with respect to t? dp dt. Times 2x. Now am I done with the product rule? Yes, I am done with the product rule. Derivative of this times this bless you, plus derivative of this times this. Done. Product rule is done. Move on to the next piece. So I have plus 25. Well, actually, maybe I won't do the 25. It's going to be plus, but this right here, I'm just going to do power rule, right? Two is going to come out. So I'm going to have plus 50p. Power came down by one. Am I done? No. I now need to multiply that by the derivative of the p. And what is the derivative of p with respect to t? dp over dt. Okay, so there's your derivative. 
Is, that, is there a lot going on there? Okay, you got to be real careful with this. Now let's just go through and just check off the things that we have. All right, make sure we're happy about this. All right, um, do I know what X is? Do I? I actually don't know what X is. Shit. Okay. That sucks. All right, dx, dt, do I know that? No, but that's what I want, right? So I'm happy about that. Okay, this marker sucks. All right, so I don't know what x is. dx, dt, I'm happy to see it because that's what I'm solving for. dx, dt, I'm happy to see because that's what I'm solving for. p, do I know what p is? Yes, it's 30. All right, dp, dt, do I know what that is? Yes, that's two. I'm happy to see that. X? Didn't know what X was. All right, P, I did know. DP, DT, I know what that is, right? So out of all of this information sitting up here, I'm going to be able to solve for DX, DT, but I still need to know what X is, right? In order to do that, somebody has to provide me X, or do they? Let's go back up here to this equation. See, last class, we didn't have to do anything like this, so that's why I'm showing this to you. That's our equation, right? That relates x and p together, right? If p is 30, if I told you right now that p was 30, you could replace that with 30 and that with 30, and then the equation you would have up there only would have x in it, wouldn't it? So that's how I'm going to figure out what x is. So I'm stuck at this point, right? I'm sitting here, I'm going, crap, I don't know what x is. However, I can take this, I can plug in p equals 30, and let's see what happens. Becomes x squared plus, what, what happens if I put a 30 right here? 30 times 2 is 60, so I get 60x. Y'all okay with that? And then I have plus, now I'm going to need a calculator for this. I'm going to have to do 30 squared times 25. I don't know. It's like 450,000, 45,000. No, am I way off? What is it? It's 22,000. Oh, 20, well, I'm a little off. 22,000 what? And you already hit it with the 25. So 22,500. Everyone understand what happened there? 30 squared times 25 is this, and then equals 74,500. And what type of equation are you looking at here? Quadratic. This is a quadratic equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything to one side. So this becomes x squared plus 60x. If I subtract if I take 22,500 and subtract 74,500, what do I get? 52,000. 52, so minus 52,000 equals zero. Are you all okay with this? Now what? Sorry? Quadratic formula. Unless you can factor that. I don't know if you can factor it. You might be able to factor it. Can you just plug it in? Can we just pull out an x from it? Uh, not. You could pull out an x from only two terms. You couldn't pull it from all three, so you couldn't. It wouldn't work. Can you put it in a calculator and do a graph and find out where it is? You could do that if everyone knew how to do that, but I, I want you to just use a quadratic formula. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would seem easier, but we're not. Look, if we, could, if we required all students to have a graphing calculator in this class, we would teach it a completely different way. Like in high schools, they provide you with graphing calculators, right? Most of them. That's why you do everything on a calculator. And then you get to college and you realize, you know what? You can't use calculators. You have to be actually be able to do this by hand. And then you're kind of stuck. All right, you ready? Quadratic formula. OK. 
Okay, x is equal to negative 60 plus or minus the square root of 3600 um, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So that's your quadratic formula, which I'm not going to write up here. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I, I'm sure you've used that before in the past. All right, and now we need, to, we need to figure out what that is. We've solved quadratics in here. You did it in 1324 also, so I'm assuming everyone in here could do this. Turns out, because of the way this was made, this problem was carefully constructed, that this number in here is 211,600, and when you take the square root of it, you get 460. So this number in here, when you do all this together, should come out to be 211,600. And then you take the square root. So when I take the square root, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 60 plus or minus the square root of that I said was 460. 460 over 2. Did you try and get this on your calculator by graphing it? So your window's, your window's not easy to see, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the problem with the graphing calculators is that, yes, for like a high school problem, they give you a problem, then when you graph it, it shows up in your window. But in the real world, most problems are not going to show up in your graphing window. And so you've got to know where to, how to do it. What's that? Can I just go to the table of values? Where it's zero? Um, Yes, but again, it comes back to that. That's only if your answer is a nice answer, because your table is going to be integers, right? Like one, two, three, four. So what if the answer is like, you know, negative five point six seven two five? So I mean, calculators are great. Don't get me wrong, technology is great, but at the end of the day, you want a mechanical way of getting to these solutions. And part of this isn't about can you do the calculation. It's can you follow a process like can you actually do a problem that requires seven steps that way when you have that job right I mean have we had this conversation a little bit already I mean I want to hire somebody who can learn how to do tasks I don't want someone who's just like you know like I hire them to like well isn't there an easier way to do this like do I actually have to think yes you have to think you have to solve this problem. You're, you're working for us, right? Think about it. This is what this is all about. Procedure, steps. Look, there's a lot of things going on here, right? If you're not capable of doing you know, multi-task, uh, multi-step problem solving, then, well, someone else is probably going to take that job for you, right? All right, keep going. Um, from here, you do the plus and minus, right? If I do the plus, I think we get 200. Yes. And then if you do the negative, I actually don't care because that means my x would be a negative number. So there's this answer or negative something. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care about the negative. Why don't I care about the negative? X is what? Demand or? X was demand, right? I'm not going to have negative demand, right? They're going to give it away, so no. All right, so x is 200. Yes, all that work. 200 what? 200 flat, yes. All right, now let's return to where we were. All right, let's not lose sight of where we were here. We were trying to figure out what dx dt was. And we had this equation from the derivative, and we didn't know what x was. 
So we had to go figure out what x was. We did that. Now we're back to this. Questions at all? I tell you a story about my brother, his job interview? No. Okay, I'll tell you after this. Just remind me. Because this is it. I'm going to finish this problem. We're done. I'm not going to do number eight, number nine, because I did, we did two or three of those last class together. All right? So those are just for you to practice. Um, all right, coming back here to this. And if you weren't here last class, it's on video, it's on YouTube, you can watch that. All right, two times what? X, which is 200, times dx dt, which is what I want to find. So I'm just leave it dx dt. Whoa. OK. Plus 2 times dx dt again. So I'm just going to leave it dx dt times p. What was p again? 30. OK, plus dp dt, which was 2, times 2 again, right, times x, which was 200, plus 50 times p, which was 30, times dp dt, which was 2. That all has to be equal to 0. Do you all see all I did was just went through and just plugged all those things in, except for the one thing I didn't know? And now let me just clean up these numbers. 2 times 200 is 400. So I have 400 dx dt plus, let's see, 2 times 30 is 60, so 60 dx dt. And then this right here, 800 plus this right here, 3,000 equals zero. We're getting real close here. These two things right here are like terms, right? You have 400 apples, you add 60 apples, you get 460 apples, right? So those are like terms. We're going to say this is 460 dx dt's. And then equals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other two and add them together, and then move them to the other side. And I'm moving them to the other side because I'm trying to get dx dt by itself. So I'll just have equals negative 3,800. And the final step would be to divide both sides by 460. Does it turn out to be a nice number or no? 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 OK. So dx dt is negative 8.26. All right. Negative 8.26 what? We are solving for dx dt. What was x again? Demand. demand. X is demand. And time was measured in weeks here, right? So we're going to put something like units per week. Units per week. What's that? 